James Madison, one of the founding fathers, was one of the most popular presidents, serving two terms from 1809 to 1817. During his presidency, the country went through the first important foreign crisis, another war with the British. I won my first term as president at the 1808 elections. I was the first pick of my party, the Democratic Republicans. As my second term was coming to an end, I decided not to run for another one. James, my good friend, was a perfect candidate to succeed me and continue the good work of strengthening our young nation. Even if you tried to win a third term, not like you could have won, Thomas. Uh, don't recall you winning two terms, John. Not sure I would have won if it wasn't for Thomas's support. We were under heavy fire from the Federalists because of the Embargo Act of 1807. Many were surprised when Madison won the 1808 elections by 122 electoral votes to 47 for the Federalist candidate Charles Pickney. That was a job well done, winning the elections. Now it was time to get to work. There was a lot of work to be done indeed. The economy was struggling. The embargo we imposed earlier crippled our international trading. I replaced it with the Non-Intercourse Act, which allowed the resumption of trade with other nations, excluding, of course, Britain and France. Yep, it was another scheme of the government. My friends and I in New England lost a ton of money because of the embargoes. Times were tough. Our young nation was facing many challenges and keeping it united was my utmost priority. The trade restrictions were not helping the situation, Mr. President. There was the issue with the First Bank of the United States as well. The charter was about to expire, and my fellow Republicans were strictly against extending the charter. Yes, it was yet another Hamiltonian tool by the government to limit our freedoms. In 1811, the First Bank charter expired and was not renewed. The government, however, was left without the means to fund the upcoming war with the British. Problems regarding domestic issues were nothing compared to the challenges we were facing from abroad. Most of my presidency was occupied with the war with Britain. During the Napoleonic Wars, which ran from 1803 to 1815, the United States remained neutral in the conflict between Britain and France, but we continued to trade with both nations. It was a good policy. We didn't side with either nation in the conflict, but we benefit a lot by trading with them. It was good while it lasted. However, both the British and the French started to attack our shipping vessels in the open seas. We were caught in the middle. Congress tried another attack by passing in May 1810 the Macon's Bill No. 2. In short, the United States would trade with Britain and France. Should one of them end their restrictions on neutral shipping, the United States would stop trading with the other. A cynical Napoleon responded by promising to end French restrictions. Napoleon was the first to offer us a non-aggression deal, but on the condition that we punish the British if they didn't do the same. Unfortunately, those pesky British wouldn't give in. They even started to recruit our sailors for their navy. Public resentment against the attacks on American vessels was growing with each day and with the British labeled as the main culprits. The President and Congress opted to begin preparations for war. This was to be the second war for independence. The war against the British would have not only granted us free trade on the seas, but the opportunity to seize Canada and pacify the Indians in the Northwest. The initial American war plan was simple, and the North American forces were to cut off Upper Canada from the Northwest and isolate pro-British Indian tribe. In the South, it was important to seize Florida from the Spaniards before the British did it. Things, however, didn't go as we planned. All of our attempts to invade Canada failed. Our forces in Detroit surrendered without a shot fired. By the end of 1812, British troops seized most of the Northwest Territory. War was an expensive venture. To build up our army and navy, we took loans from private banks with enormous interest owed. It made me wish I had never shut down the First Bank. Nevertheless, we were not going to give up on winning the war. In the midst of the war, new elections were held in 1812. War operations overshadowed the campaign, however. James Madison won another term by defeating DeWitt Clinton. The campaign showed that the country was not unified in the war effort. States in the Northeast were openly opting against the war. They refused to send their militia troops to aid the war effort and evenly secretly traded with the British. 